everyone, I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Let's talk about Edelweiss, the song from Sound of Music that is not the flower. Edelweiss is not an Austrian folk song. When Maria von Trapp herself appeared on Julie Andrews Hour, she said it definitely felt like an Austrian folk song, but it is not one. During the festival scene in the movie, all the extras in the audience were residents of Salzburg and they had to be taught the words to the song. There was one point where Ronald Reagan was president and the Austrian Prime Minister came over to visit and they played Edelweiss. Oops! So no, in fact it is not an Austrian folk song. It was written for the show. It was the last song Oscar Hammerstein ever wrote. And it seems to be just about everyone's favourite. Probably my my top favourite would be Edelweiss. Certainly the emotional, most emotional one for me is, is also Edelweiss. I wish, in fact, that it had been my song to sing. In the original musical, we don't hear the song until the festival scene. And we only hear it that one time. But in the movie, we have this scene. This scene and the puppet show beforehand, which also didn't exist in the original musical, are really the only scenes that didn't exist in some form in the musical. There are a lot of scenes that are quite different between stage and screen, but most of the quote-unquote new scenes for the film were there in the musical in some respect. But not these two. But having Edelweiss appear after the puppet show did not come out of nowhere. It came from this one line in the stage version. Remember the other night when we were all sitting on the floor singing the Edelweiss song he taught us? After we finished, you laughed at him for forgetting the words. But he didn't forget the words. He just stopped singing to look at you. And Flamin took that one line and turned it into an entire scene. A very, very important scene. Both the puppet show and Edelweiss do a lot for just about every aspect of the story. We see the captain's relationship with the children strengthening. Ulsa's mention of the party is just as brief. But because she brings it up when the children are present, it holds a lot more weight and seems a lot more obvious. We see Max taking an interest in the children singing earlier on. In the musical, he doesn't think about that until the party. So by the time we get to the party, the idea of him wanting the children to perform in the festival has had more time to sink in. As for the romance, I think it kind of serves a similar function as No Way to Stop It does in the stage version. Obviously it is not exactly the same, but I think that's probably the closest analogue you can get. Elsa and Gaelic's relationship is very politically driven in the musical, and No Way to Stop It is the point where Elsa realises this is not going to work. But with the movie not having any of that and instead having the pseudo love triangle, this scene allows us to see the beginnings of the relationship between Maria and Gail go from professional to something else. And it lets us see Elsa witness that. It's not in the same moment or has exactly the same effect as No Way to Stop It, because we're not at the same point timeline-wise, but it's definitely the beginning of Elsa noticing things. And I don't want to say that the end of Gail and Elsa's relationship in the movie is anticlimactic, but it's short and simple and it gets the job done. In the musical we go straight from the scene where the captain asks Maria to stay to the party. Mel has this scene in the middle and nothing else. Nothing else except the puppet show and Edelweiss. But when you watch the movie there does feel a bit like something is missing. Since Elsa's brought up the idea of a party, going straight to the party does make sense. But for the relationship between Maria and the captain, that means it goes from screaming to making up, but not necessarily friends yet, to suddenly one dance and they're in love and it's only been a week. Even hearing about this moment from Brigitte in retrospect feels very quick. I still stand by the fact that the romance is not insta-love and it is 100% believable even in the musical where we don't have a scene like this. But I think a lot of that hinges on two things. A, the fact that in this day and age we all see the movie first. I mean, there's an appallingly large number of people my age who have not seen the movie at all. But if they haven't seen the movie, they definitely haven't seen the musical version. And B, the fact that these people really existed. When we know that this was a real relationship that happened in real life and eventually ended up in the same spot, 
it's a bit easier to believe. And yes, I am sure there are some people who have not seen the film, see the musical first and go in completely blind with no prior knowledge that this was based on true events. But I think that's the minor minor minority. The movie also does a really good job of showing not telling where the musical doesn't. Look at these two scenes. Oh, I shall be back in about a month with some guests. Both of them give us the same piece of information, so they're both exposition, but the movie is a lot more subtle. Also, it gives more time for the romance because it's not as concrete. But when it comes to Edelweiss, having that scene appear in the timeline, but not getting to see it, only hearing about it from Brigitte later on, is very tell, not show. It is not impossible to believe that everything that happens after this scene, for all of the characters, but particularly the romance, doesn't happen and isn't genuine in the way it happens, but it's a lot more believable when we have a scene like this. Or at the very least, it's more satisfying when we get to see it. So once again, we have proof that Ernest Lehman is a freaking genius, because he took one line and managed to turn it into a scene that changes everything and benefits just about every part of the story. And that's all I've got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this song and whether adding a scene like this really, really helped the story. Or was the plot just as believable without it? Stay safe, guys. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my video next time. So long for all.